A new year has arrived for all of us. After a remarkable 2024 filled with significant advancements in SpaceX's Starship program, the exploration of the moon involving Starship is sure to be the center of attention here in 2025. So, with the achievements of the past year, how did SpaceX design its mission to the moon? Let's find out on today's episode of Alpha Tech. Starship is the largest and most powerful rocket system ever built, designed to be fully and rapidly reusable. SpaceX believes that the combination of strength and efficiency is the key breakthrough that will enable humanity to achieve a variety of spaceflight milestones, including the settlement of Mars, a long-held dream of company founder and CEO Elon Musk. That vision may become clearer in the next 12 months as Starship is poised to make significant progress in 2025. However, before pursuing the grand ambition of conquering Mars, Elon Musk must first accomplish a bold mission on the moon. This is the Artemis mission, a major contract from NASA awarded to SpaceX tasking the company with building a lunar lander capable of transporting astronauts from the Orion spacecraft to the moon's surface. If all goes according to plan, Starship is expected to officially carry out this mission in 2027 as part of Artemis III mission. At this point, Many might wonder, how does this tie into Starship's plans for 2025? The connection is in fact very clear. Before astronauts can set foot on the moon, SpaceX must first complete a critical test mission, sending an uncrewed HLS Starship to the lunar surface. This is an indispensable step before Starship can carry a crew. Although NASA's Artemis mission schedule has been delayed from its initial timeline, this may also push SpaceX's test mission beyond their previously stated plans. However, based on current information, SpaceX is only a few miles away from being ready to demonstrate Starship's capabilities for a lunar mission. The most immediate goal, expected in the first quarter of the year, is to successfully recover both Starship stages. Once this milestone is achieved, the next step involves testing in-space refueling between spacecraft. Dr. Ken Chotnaki, NASA's Deputy Director of the Human Landing System Program disclosed this during an interview in October. This test will involve two upper stages of Starship docking and transferring fuel, a maneuver never before attempted with a vehicle of such size. The test will require launching two windowless Starship vehicles roughly three to four weeks apart. The second vehicle will act as the tanker, refueling the first. If successful, this process will be repeated multiple times to assess Starship's reusability. This is critical as it ties to the number of flights needed to refuel a Starship for a future trip to the moon. However, a significant challenge impacting the timeline is orbital refueling, which could take up to 10 flights to complete. The exact number remains uncertain and could vary depending on various factors. Regardless, this task might account for nearly half of Starship's planned launches next year, a formidable challenge. Of course, ushering in a new era of space exploration inevitably comes with challenges during the development of the Starship program. Typically, we would not expect rapid success. However, this just applies to ordinary companies. With SpaceX, unexpected breakthroughs can come at any moment. Who knows? They might surprise the world with a test mission sending an uncrewed Starship to the moon by the end of this year. Could this become a reality? Comment Starship 2025 to show your excitement for the star player poised to dominate the near future of space exploration. And please don't forget to give this video a like if you've enjoyed the info we've shared so far. And please feel free to give feedback to help us improve with each episode. Thanks so much. Now, back to today's discussion. SpaceX is already gearing up for Starship's near-term plans. Many people watching the challenging testing process of Starship might think it will be a long time before the spacecraft becomes fully operational. However, we should not be too pessimistic. Only those truly passionate about and knowledgeable in the space industry can appreciate that the pace of development is unprecedented, an achievement that few, if any, other companies can match. Starship has launched six times to date, twice in 2023 and then four times last year. The vehicle made a lot of progress on these test flights, all of which flew from SpaceX's Starbase site in South Texas. On the most recent three, for instance, both Starship's elements, the Super Heavy Booster and the 50-meter upper stage spacecraft, known as Starship, or simply Ship, survived the downward trip through Earth's atmosphere in one piece. And then on Flight 5 that launched October 13th, Starship's launch tower plucked the returning Super Heavy out of the air with the chopsticks, demonstrating the recovery strategy 
that SpaceX plans to employ for both Starship stages on operational missions. Such tower catches could become a relatively common sight this year. SpaceX has applied to increase the number of permitted liftoffs from Starbase 5 fold in the coming year to 25, as the FAA has given its preliminary blessing. A draft environment assessment released by the FAA in November approves not just 25 launches from Starbase, but 50 tower catches too, 25 of Super Heavy and 25 of Ship. SpaceX also got an FAA license for the Flight 7 launch, which could happen early to mid-January. Such a surge will be huge for SpaceX, whose rocket development strategy centers on flying, iterating, and then flying again. And there's no reason to think that this goes out of reach. After all, the company has launched more than 130 orbital missions last year, the vast majority using the Workhorse Falcon 9 rocket. You don't need to be a rocket scientist to understand that the schedule they work by is unprecedented, astrophysicist Ehud Behar, a professor at Technon Israel Institute of Technology, said. The target of 25 Starship flights this year is just the beginning. SpaceX intends to scale up next year and beyond. Elon would say next year he'd love to have us have 25 missions a year and in the next few years, 100. Kathy Luters, GM of SpaceX's Starbase Operations, said in November during the Mexico Space Agency National Congress of Space Activities Conference, he was telling me, Kathy, I'd love to launch a couple times a day. Because SpaceX has developed so rapidly, it has become the primary target for competition in the industry, notably the longstanding rival Blue Origin founded by Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos is preparing the new Glenn Heavy lift rocket for its first launch from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station along the Florida coast. NASA has awarded multi-billion dollar contracts to both SpaceX and BO to transport Artemis astronauts to the moon's craters in the latter half of this decade. However, the timeline for these landings has faced some delays and independent space experts continue to debate which company will be the first to land back on the moon's silver black surface. SpaceX has developed the massive Starship rocket and spacecraft system designed to carry up to 100 astronauts on moon and Martian adventures. One day, it may be remembered as one of the technological marvels of the new millennium. Although Starship's early launches ended in dramatic explosions reminiscent of NASA's experiments, its fifth test flight was nearly flawless. Blue Origin, like SpaceX, was established at the dawn of the new millennium. However, its founder and design team have taken a far more cautious and discreet approach to developing and unveiling new prototypes, different than the dramatic flare and fireworks often associated with early-stage rocket launches. Jarrett Jones, senior vice president of Blue Origin, overseeing the development of New Glenn, said the rocket aced a series of tests conducted around Christmas, including the practice firing of the seven massive liquid methane and oxygen fuel BE-4s that power the first stage. This is a monumental milestone and a glimpse of what's just around the corner for New Glenn's first launch, Jones said in a press release. Today's success proves our rigorous approach to testing combined with our incredible tooling and design engineering is working as intended. Blue Origin is simultaneously developing its Blue Moon Lander for the upcoming NASA missions, and its vice president, John Kalura, said earlier this year that the rocket outfit aims to land an uncrewed prototype of the spacecraft on the lunar surface this year. The Blue Moon, which vaguely resembles the lunar module that first carried the NASA astronauts to the powdery plains of the moon a generation ago, and the New Glenn booster are vastly simpler than SpaceX's cosmic starship, which might actually work in Blue Origin's favor in terms of reaching the ancient orb first in this new millennium space race, says Professor Kip Hodges, founding director of the School Earth and Space Exploration at ASU and one of the leading space scholars in the U.S., could a new Glenn beat Starship to the lunar surface, Professor Hodges wonders? It's not impossible. Starship has slightly more legacy, but new Glenn has the advantage of simplicity. Professor Hodges lauds the extraordinary design of Starship and says its next-gen technology, tremendous power, and reusability all represent a planet-changing revolution in spaceflight, one that'll be highlighted for the history books. But the complexity of refueling the SpaceX super ship in low Earth orbit with cryogenically cooled methane and oxygen, he says, along with other complications that might arise due to its futuristic design, could delay its first flights to the moon. And while Blue Origin and SpaceX vie with one another to get to the moon, they'll also be competing in a sense with NASA and its traditionally designed and built an extremely costly SLS rocket and Orion capsule. Under NASA's current blueprints, which have come under fire from different directions over the last several years, 
the SLS will blast the Orion into orbit around the moon, where the capsule will rendezvous with either a SpaceX or a Blue Origin lander to transport the human explorers to the surreal surroundings of the satellite's South Pole. Since unveiling and evolving this master plan for moon exploration, NASA has never fully explained the rationale for relying on two parallel sets of rockets and capsules for each Artemis mission. The agency's complex strategy would deliver only eight astronauts to the polar region of the moon over the next five years and require massive budgets, says NASA Inspector General Paul Martin. Martin testified at Congress last year that each launch of Space Launch System and Orion spacecraft are going to cost more than $4 billion. Relying on such an expensive single-use heavy lift rocket system will, in our judgment, inhibit, if not derail, NASA's ability to sustain its long-term human exploration goals for the moon and Mars, Martin told NASA's leading supporters in Congress. Altogether, he added, NASA is projected to spend $93 billion on the Artemis effort from FY 2012 through FY 2025. Inspector General Martin attributed the ever-rising costs of the Artemis program, endangering the goal of engineering a sequence of lunar landings throughout the 2020s and beyond, to the agencies using a cost-plus contracting structure for the SLS and Orion, which rewards traditional spacecraft developers like Boeing, prime contractor for SLS, regardless of the quality or cost or timeliness of their production, and provides no incentive to design reusable rockets. Unlike SpaceX and BO's recoverable boosters, the core stage of Boeing's SLS, with its advanced RS-25s derived from the U.S. Space Shuttle, is jettisoned into the Atlantic following every liftoff. At the moment, Martin said, SLS is the only launch vehicle with the capability to lift the 27-metric ton Orion capsule to lunar orbit. Yet SpaceX and Blue Origin are in the final stages of developing powerful rockets that capitalize on multiple technological innovations, making them lighter, cheaper, and reusable. The competition between these agile aerospace outfits will drive down launch rates, and NASA should start weighing whether to replace the high-cost SLS with a commercial alternative, Martin told the House of Representatives. Although Congress mandated that NASA build the SLS and Orion for its space goals in 2010, he said, the agency may soon have more affordable options to carry humans to the moon and beyond. During one of his swan song pressers, current NASA Administrator Bill Nelson was asked whether he was concerned that his successors, with the changing of the guards set for January 20th, might eliminate the entire sphere of cost-plus contracts that are clouding NASA's future. Your question is, are they going to ax the Artemis and insert the starship, Nelson replied? In a roundabout way, Nelson strived to defend the future use of the space launch system and ruled out it ultimately getting replaced by SpaceX's Starship. But he didn't present any economic or technological rationale for that prediction. And that's it for today's episode. Thanks for being with us today and see you next time.